Good evening, God's Prayer Warriors, my brothers and sisters. This is Brother Felix here. And tonight we're going to be re reading from Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 26. Again, we'll be reading from Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 26. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I thank you for today. I thank you for my life, for my wife, Teresa, and for my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. I give you thanks for loving and forgiving us. I give you thanks for all your prayer warriors and all my brothers and sisters that will watch this video. Lord Jesus, I ask in your name, may there be at least one verse for each one of our ears. That would be two verses per head in tonight's reading. And when we hear these verses spoken, may the Holy Spirit be stirred up inside of us. And may we have the courage to apply these verses in our life. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alright brothers and sisters, let's get right into it. Galatians chapter 5 verses 1 through 26. Freedom of the Gospel. Freedom in Christ. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened against be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised, that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. But by faith we eagerly await through the Spirit the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus... Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. You were running a good race. Who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion will pay the penalty, whoever he may be. Brothers, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I being why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. You, my brothers, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Life by the Spirit. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. The acts 
of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. Idolatry and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. These are the words of our Lord, our God, brothers and sisters. Amen. Let's break down some of these verses together. Verse 1 reads, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened, against, be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Christ died to set us free from sin and from a long list of laws and regulations. Christ came to set us free. Not free to do whatever we want because that would lead us back into slavery to our selfish desires. Rather, thanks to Christ, we are now free and able to do what was impossible before. To live unselfishly. Those who appeal to their freedom so that they can have their own way or indulge their own desires are falling back into sin. But it is also wrong to put a burden of law keeping on Christians. We must stand against those who would enslave us with rules, methods, or special conditions for being saved or growing in Christ. Verses 2 through 4 read, Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law, you who are trying to be justified by law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. Trying to be saved by keeping the law and being saved by grace are two entirely different approaches. Christ will be of no value to you at all means that Christ's provision for our salvation will not help us if we are trying to save ourselves. Obeying the law does not make it easier for God to save us. All we can do is accept his gracious gift through faith. Our deeds of service must never be used to try to earn God's love or favor. Circumcision was a symbol of having the right background and doing everything required by religion. No amount of work discipline, or moral behavior can save us. If a person were counting on finding favor with God by being circumcised, he would have to obey the rest of God's law completely. Trying to save ourselves by keeping all God's laws 
only separates us from God. Verse 6 reads, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. We are saved by faith, not by deeds. I repeat, we are saved by faith, not by deeds. But love for others and for God is the response of those whom God has forgiven. God's forgiveness is complete. And Jesus said that those who are forgiven much love much. In Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Because faith expresses itself through love, you can check your love for others as a way to monitor your faith. Verse 9 reads, A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. A little yeast causes a whole lump of dough to rise. It only takes one person it only takes one wrong person to infect all the others. A little yeast causes a whole lump of dough to rise. It only takes one wrong person to infect all the others. Wow. Verse 11, brothers and sisters, reads, Brothers, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. Persecution proved that Paul was preaching the true gospel. If he had taught what the false teachers were teaching, no one would be offended. But because he was teaching the truth, he was persecuted by both Jews and Judaizers. Have friends or loved ones rejected you because you have taken a stand for Christ. Yes, that has happened to me. Jesus said, Not to be surprised if the world hates you, because it hated him. You can read that in John chapter 15, verses 18 and 19. Just as Paul continued to faithfully proclaim the message about Christ, you should continue doing the ministry God has given you. In spite of the obstacles others may put in your way. Verse 13 reads, You, my brothers, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. Paul distinguishes between freedom to sin and freedom to serve. Freedom or license to sin is no freedom at all because it enslaves you to Satan. Others or your own sinful nature. Christians, by contrast, should not be slaves to sin because they are free to do right and to glorify God through loving service to others. Verses 14 and 15 read, The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. When we are not motivated by love, we become critical of others. We stop looking for good in them and see only their faults. Soon the unity of believers is broken. Have you talked behind someone's back? Yes, I have. I'm guilty of that. Have you focused on others' shortcomings instead of their strengths? I have, and I'm guilty of that as well. Remind yourself of Jesus' command to love others as you love yourself. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. When you begin to feel critical of someone, make a list of that person's positive 
qualities. That is something that I'm going to definitely start doing. When you begin to feel critical of someone, make a list of that person's positive qualities. If there are problems that need to be addressed, it is better to confront and love than to gossip. If there are problems that need to be addressed, it is better to confront and love than to gossip. Amen. Verses 16 through 18 read. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. If you desire to have the qualities listed in chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, then you know that the Holy Spirit is leading you. At the same time, be careful not to confuse your subjective feelings with the Spirit's leading. Being led by the Holy Spirit involves a desire to hear, the readiness to obey God's word, and the sensitivity to discern between your feelings and his promptings. Live each day controlled and guided by the Holy Spirit. Then the words of Christ will be in your mind. The love of Christ will be behind your actions. And the power of Christ will will help you control your selfish desires. Paul describes the two forces conflicting within us, the Holy Spirit and the sinful nature, our evil desires or inclinations that stem from our bodies. From our bodies. See also chapter 5, verse 16, verse 19, and verse 24. Paul is not saying that these forces are equal. The Holy Spirit is infinitely stronger, but if we rely on our own wisdom, we will make wrong choices. If we try to follow the Spirit by our own human effort, we will fail. Our only way to freedom from our evil desires is through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. As you can see in Romans chapter 8 verse 9, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 and 24, and Colossians chapter 3 verses 3 through 8. Verses 19 through 21 read, The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. We all have evil desires, and we can't ignore them, brothers and sisters. In order for us to follow the Holy Spirit's guidance, we must deal with them decisively, we must crucify them, as it says in chapter 5, verse 24. These desires include obvious sins, such as sexual immorality and witchcraft. They also include less obvious sins, such as selfish ambition, hatred, and jealousy. Those who ignore such sins 
or refuse to deal with them reveal that they have not received the gift of the Spirit that leads to a transformed life. I repeat, those who ignore such sins or refuse to deal with them reveal that they have not received the gift of the Spirit that leads to a transformed life. Verses 22 and 23 read, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit is spontaneous work of the Holy Spirit in us. The Spirit produces the, these character traits that are found in the nature of Christ. They are the byproducts of Christ's control. We can't obtain them by trying to get them without His help. If we want the fruit of the Spirit to grow in us, we must join our lives to His as in John chapter 15, verse 4 and 5, we must know Him, love Him, remember Him, and imitate Him. As a result, we will fulfill the intended purpose of the law, to love God and our neighbors. Which of these qualities do you want the Spirit to produce in you? Well, I'd like the Spirit to produce all of them. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I feel that I have uh, a good amount of love and, and joy and peace. I could definitely uh, use some help to be more patient. So I, could, I need help with, with, with patience. Um... Kindness, goodness, faithfulness. You know, I, I definitely have those. Uh, gentleness. Sometimes I'm not the most gentle of, of, of people. So patience and gentleness I need help with. And self-control at times. Because uh, as I've said before in, in, in uh, previous videos, uh, sometimes I, I can get... Uh, I can get angry uh, rather easily with some of the people that I love most in life, which sounds crazy, but uh, it is something that uh, I struggle with. Um, I sometimes get angry pretty quick, uh, sometimes with my own spouse and sometimes with my own children. So... Which of these qualities do I want the Spirit to produce in, in me uh, stronger? You know, it would definitely be um, patience, gentleness, and self-control. Now, because the God who sent the law also sent the Spirit, the byproducts of the Spirit-filled life are in perfect harmony with the intent of God's law. A person who exhibits the fruit of the Spirit fulfills the law far better than the person who observes the rituals but has little love in his or her heart. Uh, verse 24, brothers and sisters, reads, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. In order to accept Christ as Savior, we need to turn from our sins and willingly nail our sinful nature to the cross. This doesn't mean, however, that we will never see traces of its evil desires again. As Christians, we still have the capacity to sin. But we have been set free from sin's power over us and no longer have to give in to it. 
We must daily commit our sinful tendencies to God's control. Daily crucify them. And moment by moment, draw on the Spirit's power to overcome them. As you can read in chapter 2, verse 20, and chapter 6, verse 14. Uh, verse 25 reads, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. God is interested in every part of our lives, not just the spiritual part. As we live by the Holy Spirit's power, we need to submit every aspect of our lives to God, emotional, physical, social, intellectual, intellectual, vocational. Paul says that because we're saved, we should live like it. The Holy Spirit is the source of your new life, so keep in step with his leading. Don't let anything or anyone else determine your values and standards in any area of your life. And verse 26, brothers and sisters. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Everyone needs a certain amount of approval from others. But those who go out of their way to secure honors or to win popularity with a lot of people become conceited and show they are not following the Holy Spirit's leading. Those who look to God for approval won't need to envy others because we are God's sons and daughters. We have his Holy Spirit as the loving guarantee of his approval. Amen, brothers and sisters. So some verses that stick out to me in tonight's reading would be uh, verse 25 and 26. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Verse 16. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Verse 14, the entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. I will repeat verse 14. It, it, it's, it's powerful. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 7 and 8. You were running a good race. Who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. And verse 5. But by faith we eagerly await through the Spirit, through the, spirit the righteousness for which we hope. Great readings, my great reading tonight, my brothers and sisters. Let's end in prayer. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just want to thank you for tonight's reading. I want to thank you for, for your holy word. And just all the praise, glory, and honor belongs to you, Lord.
Lord Jesus, I ask that you forgive us for our sins, that you give us a discerning heart, that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you remove any evil inside of us and destroy the evil. I ask that you keep us healthy, happy, and safe, that you continue to lead us, teach us, guide us, and protect us. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you heal us of any sicknesses, diseases, viruses, cancers, diabetes, arthritis, uh, degenerative back disc disease, uh, blood clots, anything that's causing us harm or pain, whether it is physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, I ask in the name of Jesus that you break chains of addiction, uh, whether they are in us or in someone we love. I'm asking that you break chains of addiction, of smoking, of drinking, of lusting, of power, of money, of greed. I ask that you break chains of sin. If there's any sins that we enjoy do doing and we choose to do them, I ask that the Holy Spirit convicts us in our heart and makes us feel sick to our stomach uh, until we repent and turn away from these sins. I ask that you bless, protect, and heal all your prayer warriors and their loved ones. I give you thanks for, for my wife, Teresa. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect uh, my mother, heal her of her blood clot. My sister, Elizabeth, help her recover from her back surgery. My sister, Yvette, help her uh, with her sciatic nerve problem. Uh, Henry Tim, um, my, uh, my, my spiritual pops, uh, 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 and uh, uh, wife, and, and, and my ma, uh, Betty Payne, healer of her knee. I ask that you bless, heal, protect, comfort, and, and strength. Ricky Joel Alvarez. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect everyone at... The Kingdom Music Family Ministry, St. Paul's Lutheran Church, and Hope Lutheran Church, and the House of Rest Church in Modesto, California. Uh, I especially ask that you bless, heal, and protect Brother Brian and his wife and children, Pastor Angel Morales and his wife and children, and Pastors David and Angel Rocha and their wives and children. I love you, God. I need you. And I just thank you. And all the glory and the praise belongs to you. And I ask that you just continue to lead me down the path that, that you want me to go. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters. Great reading. I hope you guys have a, have a good night. I love you guys. And, uh, you know, we'll continue reading tomorrow. So good night. God bless you. Bye.